and welcome to another asynchronous lesson on modeling 101. Now you're going to be following along on slide 72 through 76 so you'll have access to these specific slides which will help you think about these questions and a little bit more about the data and information that I'm sending your way. You're going to want to have a copy of the Stellar spreadsheet and you're also going to want to have learning how to model part two, which is going to be having you make graphs, put them in the top right corner, and then answer some questions in the bottom right corner related to the graph or the overall thing that we're talking about. So let's get started. So we learned last week and we're practicing this week how to make models for, for trend lines. Now there's three additional things that we can do today. Um, after we're finished, thinking about scatterplot modeling for accuracy and understanding relationships. We can add lines of best fit for predictions. We can talk about variants of our data, and we can talk about removing outliers or outgroups. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is making a graph of absolute magnitude and solar luminosity, solar luminosity on the x-axis, absolute magnitude on the y-axis, and you're going to want to think about these three questions when you look at this initial scatter plot in terms of possible trends. Does this actually make sense when we think about how stars live and die? And what don't you like about the data and the trend in the scatter plot? What are some weaknesses or errors that you might see? So I'm going to go into my scatter plot and I'll just quickly make a graph highlighting luminosity and magnitude of that. I'll go to chart and voila. And I can simply just copy and paste this into my Google Doc. And you can paste unlinked because you're going to be making changes to your graphs. All right, so the second thing that we can talk about, or the first thing really, is a line of best fit. Now, a line of best fit is really adding a trend line to your graph. And it allows us to really think about, does X or Y have a relationship? If so, the line should change in some capacity as we move from left to right. And it also lets us start making predictions. So we can add an equation to our line. We have this fancy one right here where we could predict the magnitude or the brightness of any star given a known solar luminosity. Um, and this allows us to start looking for patterns, but also it allows us to test how accurate our model is. So if I found a star with 50,000 solar luminosities, it ought to have an absolute magnitude right around 0.2 or 0.3. What do we actually find when we find those stars? That is what a line of best fit allows us to start doing. Now, to make a line of best fit, you're going to double click on your graph. You're going to go over to Customize. You're going to scroll down to Series. And you should see a trend line here. Now, something that you will note is that you can change different types of trend lines. You can make it exponential, polynomial, logarithmic, power series, moving average. For now, I would say you probably want to stick to linear or exponential. Exponential only means that there might be more than one factor causing absolute magnitude to change alongside luminosity. And to add, um, one second, to add a label, we just go to down here and we show use equation. And here's our equation for making predictions about absolute magnitude. So you're going to want to now copy and paste this new graph into your second uh, box right here. I'm going to do paste unlinked and then answer questions right here about your understanding of best of best uh, line of best fit blah sorry about that and also trends. Now the third thing we can talk about or the second thing really the third slide is outliers. So sometimes we collect data that's error prone or maybe it's data that we shouldn't have collected because it belongs in a different group. And for this, we can sort, delete, or remove the data from the graph to try and make our trend line more accurate or better. So we already know that stars are different based on their mass. 
They might be different based on their color or their temperature. They tend to be big or small based on radius, and they either fall above or below zero absolute magnitude in terms of brightness. So graphing different groups of data might give you more cohesion with trend lines, and it might give you better accuracy. So how do we go about making our trend lines better? And how do we go about um, grouping or removing outliers? First thing you're going to do is go down to copy of sheet and you're going to press duplicate, which is basically going to make a copy of your spreadsheet. So here's my original spreadsheet. Here's my new one. I'm going to sort my data, which I've already done by luminosity, but I'm just going to refresh you on how to do that. So I'm going to do control A. I'm going to go to data. I'm going to sort range. I'm going to go data has a header row. Go to luminosity and I'm going to go to Z to A. Bingo. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of the data that I have that I think are outgroups. And I would basically say that ooh, the first three are definitely outgroups because their solar luminosities are thousands of times bigger than the other stars. And then suddenly you can start to see that, oh, I have all of these stars clumped here. I have a 4,000 and I have a 20,000. I'm going to get rid of the 20,000s. And ooh, I have all these stars here. I have this 4,000 star here. It might still be way different than these other stars, so I'm going to get rid of them. And then suddenly you might be able to start seeing a trend. So even though I have a line of best fit, that shows me that slowly absolute magnitude gets um, more negative or brighter with greater luminosities, you can see this lovely scattering of stars going down. So you're going to want to take your new graph and you're going to paste it in the third section. You're going to want to talk about the accuracy of your trend line and whether or not it's better than the original one. And that brings us to our third thing that we're going to talk about, R2 or R squared. Now, like R2D2 in Star Wars, R2 really helps us uh, get steered in the right direction. In terms of modeling, it really tells us how accurate and strong our model is by looking at the trend line and looking at all of the data. Now, a high R2, which is going to be closer to 1, means that X is really good at explaining Y. So as solar luminosity changes, we should expect to see a really big change in absolute magnitude. Or zero means that we have a bunch of junk. It's all error. Nothing is related between X and Y. Now, a high number for R2 can mean two things. It can mean a correlation in that X and Y simply just have a strong relationship. The two variables actually might not be related. I might find that taller people tend to eat more peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in a scatter plot. But that doesn't necessarily mean that eating more peanut butter and jelly sandwiches makes you tall, or making you tall suddenly makes you like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. A causation means that there's an actual link between X and Y. So if you eat more peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you will get taller. In order to know if you have a correlation or causation, you tend to need to know a lot about the X and the Y variables in terms of what causes them to change and how might they be related. So to add an R squared value, you're going to click on your scatter plot. You're going to go to customize, go back to series, and you can add show R2. Now our R2 right now is 0.254, which means that about 25% of our um, data when it comes to changes in absolute magnitude are related to luminosity. It's not great, but it's also not bad, especially when I consider that my original graph that I started off with had an R2 value of 0 0.381. Oh, yikes. It's even more accurate. So we might sometimes realize that sometimes getting rid of data actually isn't the best thing to do. So this is really just, again, explaining how strongly does my graph and my trend line explain changes in Y and changes related to X? 
regardless of whether you had a positive or a better uh, change in R2, you're going to want to put that fourth scatter plot right here. And you're going to want to talk about the differences and the strengths and how that might be related to the outliers. So that shouldn't take too long. Ideally, you should follow along with this video and be perfectly fine. And if you have to rewatch things, do that. And if you need help, email me. What you're going to do to show me that you really understand this is that you're going to go back to the scatter plot. You're going to make a new scatter plot of two variables that are not luminosity and absolute magnitude. And you're going to follow these directions. So you're going to first look at the trend line and R2 values. You're going to remove outliers based on groupings or categories of stars. You're going to paste the new scatter plot in the uh, bottom left corner right there. And then you're going to want to answer these analysis questions. Um, we'll be using this type of technology and these methods a lot in the next couple months. So practice. Ask for help and let me know how I can make this easier for you. Have a great day. Bye.